Why are you looking at me like that? I must look at you. Why? I think it's in her contract. Oh. We have a third person who might need to speak up because Hi. that's my sister who sometimes minions and she is sitting up there. Mistress! Yes, the last scene in the Black Sheep Review. I had to spend so long getting that bloopin' dictionary together. Yep, yeah, it was very important. But we as a three went to see uh, something that rhymes with E. Gods of Egypt. Yeah, Gods of Egypt. It was not Prince of Egypt. Yes. Prince of Egypt would have been better. <laughs> Probably. I've actually never even seen it. I just remember hearing about it. I'm like, oh, a Bible story, an animated one. I can't wait to go see that. Now, wow. I know this film came out in America months ago, but we are special, and so we get it in a different time period than you. Yeah, I think there was nothing else except, like, Conjuring 2. It's and... because of Doctor Who, probably. How is it because of Doctor Who? We got it time travel. Oh, we got it wobbly, timey wimey. All yeah. Brits can time travel, apparently. We, we got the film in the future. Except in the past. Northern Irish. Well, no, we do get some films early. I mean, look at some oh, yeah. of the recent That's true. Ones. We got we get to see Civil War before y'all did. <laughs> yeah. But, um, yeah, no Conjuring 2, probably, because I'd want to see that with Robin, because we fucking hated The Conjuring, so we're the only ones who did, so I don't want to particularly... So I'd like to do a sequel to that. Fair play. I don't really care. So we went to see Gods of Egypt, and let's do, start off with the non-spoiler short version for the people who most likely have already seen it or will see it on DVD or something. Jamie Lannister stomps around Egypt without a shirt on. Sometimes he's a giant bird man. I... Now see, a, a co-worker of mine today was like, oh, don't go see it. It's really bad. I saw it. And everyone was saying how bad it was. So I decided that I would try to focus on the good things. And there were some good things. Um, the, the score was pretty good with the exception of the fact that they overused the main theme. <laughs> at like towards like the last third of the movie, they were using it in every Should've run out of music. shot. So I was already to be like, oh, but the score was great. But most of the score was good. And the um, main theme that was constantly reused sounds like the Mummy theme. It does. It really I mean, does. Though. I know the Mummy 1999 one, which I remember vividly because I have a copy of the Mummy score on DVD because I bought it in 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 the Holy Land whenever I was over there because that was the summer the Mummy came out and I saw it a bunch of times over here and then I saw it in Israel with Arabic subtitles, which was awesome because they didn't actually lower the lights in case there was bombs. <laughs> so the part where like your man is going through like all the religious incantations. Did they, like, not subtitle the part where he was speaking in Arabic? No. Oh, that would have been, like, because they would know what he didn't said. But luckily, it was, like, third time I'd seen it, so I was like, this is an experience. I get to watch the Americans' version of the Middle East in the Middle East. I am a librarian! <laughs> is the best line in it. About but, the librarians. Um, yeah, that's true. But, like, some other good things was I, the gods were portrayed as being, like... Giants, like being that in scale. That was a very great idea. Yeah, I, I actually, I really liked that. I really, I thought that was really kind of cool. That like, oh, the gods just like live among the people. So that was kind of cool. Some of the effects were cool. The gods had gold blood, so that was kind of neat. Um, there was an impossibly high waterfall that I wished existed in real life so I could go look at it as a tourist. There were two impossibly large waterfalls. One of them fell literally out of the sky. Yeah, that's true. Um, the giant gods thing. I just realized that while I thought it was really cool, I'm now having flashbacks to a YouTube series that, let's just say it will be, I'm not going to mention it uh, on video, suffice to say it's head melting new age nonsense, so, uh, direct from the cosmic ring piece. No, please do. Uh, spirit science. Spirit yeah. science. Mm. Apparently it's mad. Um, don't look at it. You may actually hurt yourself. That sounds like a challenge to me. Yeah, laughing it does. And, She'll do uh, it. Head desking. That sounds like a challenge to me. But like, oh, you'll enjoy it, I think. Oh, good. Visually, like the, the 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 a lot of care was taken with the architecture, and stuff and scale to the point where you first see that you know great the cat the capital Thebes, like it looks like an it looks like Coruscant, <laughs> like but an ancient version. But I I appreciated full that. Of pyramids. Yeah, but like don't exist anymore. But that 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 kind that part was kind of cool. Um, the god of knowledge was kind of gay. Yeah, kind Black Panther of. is Eng is the English god of knowledge. <laughs> Inexplicably English god of knowledge. He's also gay, which was awesome. But it's really weird because I was like, 
Why is the God of Knowledge so gay? That's okay. Black Panther. Oh, I didn't recognize him because he's trying not trying not to act. Like how in Civil War, he's like, I am in this movie, but I will not do any acting. I promise you, I will not do any it acting in this movie. It does feel like some of the I refuse to act in this that. movie. <laughs> no, no, but that's how that's how I how I felt that Black Panther was. He was like, yeah. I will be here, but I am un it's under protest. I will not act. Like but this Jared, one, he's like, I can act. Oh. <laughs> Others were trying. Gerald Butler, though, was trying, but he wasn't even trying in the accent. Who was Gerald Butler? Uh, sad. He's yeah, he like United sounded 300. Scottish. The he, he is Scottish. Well, he as, and that's kind of Irish at times. But like, yeah, like yeah. he's like trying, and then he's sort of like American. Like I don't even know what this guy was going for. It's, it's Leonidas from Three Hundred. He yeah. tried he to do accents anger. in other ones, but no, he was just speaking in an yeah. Irish accent. Because you know, Scottish. No, I'm is, so you know, the people from the Egyptian desert frequently sound Scottish. Yeah, they I also thought... end up with Caucasian Sean Connery Panther. in Highlander. Oh God, you're right. Yes, this has precedence. Scottish know. Egyptian, uh, Scottish Egyptians. Right. Highland Ramirez from Highlander, played by Sean Connery. He's a two thousand he's... year old Egyptian. Yes, uh -huh. who uh, pretends to be Spanish, but he's actually Egyptian. Okay. Now we know that's what the ancient Egypt, ancient yeah. Egyptians. Uh, they were so uh, Scottish. Oh, oh, I like the oh, oh. What? The myth of the word Scotland. It comes from the Scotia clan of, um, of, of from Ireland, who were one of the Gaelic clans who invaded uh, Scotland from uh, invaded Pictland from Ireland, if I remember correctly. And the Scotia clan were named after Princess Scotia. Their myth is that she was an Egyptian princess who married the head of their clan, and they renamed the clan in her honor. And the stone that allegedly she was she gave as a wedding present to her husband was this stone which a uh, prophet in the Old Testament used as a pillow in the desert, and I can't remember which one it was. Elijah. Elijah, possibly then. And uh, that became the Stone of Skun. This is all myth. That's bollocks. We saw it. The Stone of Skun. We saw it. We went to see Edinburgh Castle. They, they've done testing on the Stone of Skun. It's pictures. not from the Middle East. Yeah, and you can't so this take is all bollocks. Either. But there you go. Scottish people are Egyptian. Apparently so. The there's, more you know. There's mythological precedence for this. <laughs> But yeah, Jamie Lannister okay. just kind of strode about Then I without a shirt. Then I change my comment about everyone else's accent. Everyone else should have been doing a Scottish yeah. accent. Every, everyone else failed. Well, yeah. you know, Toth aimed for Scottish and hit England, which is close. Is he English? Well, what is he even? He's actually American. Okay. <laughs> he could have been trying to go for effete Edinburgh. Yeah, maybe. I didn't know what he was supposed to be. I mean, he was cool. And we're like, yeah, yeah, black person in, in Egypt. Good, good on you. Even though you're American, but though arguably they should really be sort of complected around the same sort of way as as Hathor. Yeah, the olive. The, uh, that's what I was thinking. Everyone is Just like Semitic. Ninety percent. Yeah, where were the Jews? Mm -hmm. They were never enslaved in Egypt. Mm -hmm. Sorry, they weren't. That's a myth. No, but I wanted there to be like Jews, and there to be like, oh, it was great that Horus saved us. Why are why are you guys looking at us like that? Well, we're going to need someone to build our pyramids now. Where? Well, that's obviously in the epilogue. The pyramids were built by Yeah, that, that, that's going to be the next one in the franchise. The, 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 no, were, I wanted to... I wanted to they, were, they, were paid, they were paid in beer. No, honey, I was making a joke. We, we know this. They were, the Jews were only just enslaved in, Babylon, in the Babylonians. No, I, wanted, I wanted to make a joke, honey, but it's okay. Oh. I've had to explain it to you and now it's ruined, okay? All right? Oh. Don't worry. I'm just, going all bone kickers the aren't talk I? To the, talk to the people, okay? <laughs> you talk to the nice people. But yeah, I mean, it looked pretty, but actually not all the time. It Visually, it reminded me of mm -hmm. a Tarzan Singh movie that had been dropped on its head as a baby. Immortals was awesome. It, Bro I broke her. No resistance on this. She's going to say the script was bad. Immortals, the script was bad. No, it wasn't. Th this film's script was bad, too. Well, this script was terrible. This script was really was bad. The dialogue, some of that dialogue was... That was Lucas level clunky. It was like yeah. the, your main guy was this guy named Beck, and so I had loser in my head for like the entirety <laughs> of the movie because I kept thinking about Beck and like his Josiah. Ah, Raz, an alien, Scient and Beck's a Scientologist. Oh, uh, he is. Yeah, I a musician. Never knew it. I believe he is. Yeah. 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 Is he okay? He was raised in Scientology. Should That's his family something? religion. Oh, so. But oh. there you go. Oh, it all come together. Yeah. So like. Uh, it was just all over the place. Like it was just every trope ever, and it just I don't you know. Yeah, and really clunky expositionary bits. As you know, Bob, I am head of the Nile. Oh, it's just handy that my girlfriend happens to be uh, 
uh, the slave of the architect who's built all of Seth's things. And so well, I learned all these plans so I could go do that. That could have been much easier if they just called Rufus Sewell's character Imhotep. Because Imhotep he was the name of the architect of the Great Pyramid. Yeah. So that's where the name comes from, from the original Mummy film in the 30s. No, he just became, became an evil, evil slightly dirt. faded uh, Lovejoy. It wasn't Lovejoy, that was yes. Rufus Sewell. Yes, but he looks a bit like Lovejoy. Oh. One time I got a point in a pub quiz because I remember that the wife of the Game of Thrones and the mummy was a not cinnamon. And that was a big day for me, I'm just saying. They pronounced the change pronunciation of Anak Suniman's name in the Mummy movies to Pet. I don't care. 80, I, still got us the the point. I still got us the point we won Pub Quiz. Yeah. So, I'm just saying. But uh, basically, with this one, the script is terrible. However, it was the right level of mad for yeah. a mythological film. Because yeah, that's true. Clash of the Titans, the remake, especially. Mm, they try to make they they try to have giant monsters and gods and shit, but they try to make everything else as realistic as possible, and it's absolutely terrible. With this one, they throw everything at you. You've got a flat Earth. You've got uh, Raz Barge as he's dragging the sun around, and it's basically a spaceship, and he has to battle Apophis, who is a giant smoky space vagina. He has yep. to battle it with a giant with a spear laser gun. Yep, it's not really a gun. It's yeah. like fires it. It's it fires the power of the sun. It's like the thing in Stargate. Yeah, yeah. You know the sort yeah, of the sp yeah. sp sp staff laser. Yeah, and he happens to be a thirty-five foot tall, fiery Jeffrey Rush. Yeah, this that is the sort Jeffrey of Jeffrey Rush. Yeah, this... it's like Jeffrey Rush from Pirates of the Caribbean. Yeah, this is. How what... does he do that? Well, he was obvious. I, I spotted him, Jeffrey Rush. I can never find him. Well, this is this I'm is. Well, obviously... I've been told that he's involved. I never know who anyone is. I'm always like, hey, it's that guy. What, Jamie Lannister? Oh, right, right, right. So it's, they went for that, it was the correct level of madness if you're doing myth. Don't try to sit in the real world if it's myth. Depict the world as the people whose story you're telling believed oh, in and it. I like and how, it's like, so far more interesting. you cut off parts of the gods, they turn into like, like actual like physical things, like artifacts. Like the eye of Horus became like this jewel. And like he reached in and got the god of knowledge's brain and became this huge jewel. And he cut off the protection goddess's wings and then became wings. He bolted onto the back of his like Zordon God mech. It was like a Giver yeah. dwarf made by dwarves. Yeah, he, he made a mech at the end. The wings, saying. they were actually the the style of the wings on a cartouche. Yeah, yeah. The rest of it, not quite so much. I still thought that was yeah, the cartouche wings were great. That was really neat. Yeah, yeah. So that and, was pretty cool. Well, though, they went to they went to all of the, that extreme with the madness, which was good. But there was other areas where they completely ignored it. So, like, we cast a bunch of white people. We have no shaven heads. We have no wigs. We have no yeah, makeup. We have no face beards. Maybe that was before the shaven and the, the like pretend beards. They're not caring about that sort of timing thing. thing, you know? They're, they're not caring. Well, yeah, because I said it was in like a time immemorial. So it's, I was yeah. guessing before, before the yeah, first. Because they weren't mummifying people. Yeah, but they weren't thinking. Of, they, they, I, I would lay money on the fact that they weren't thinking about, oh, well, this is actually predates the use of makeup and stuff in ancient Egypt. It, the makeup was entirely practical. Although one thing that was really cool is the two times that we saw mirrors being used as vanity items, they were polished brass because there was no such thing as silvered mirrors yet, I'm just saying. So they... And that was really cool. In the... There's no way in hell that they chose that as because, as far as they're concerned, that those things hadn't been invented yet. Maybe if there was someone like me on the team who was like, well, actually, you guys, I really think. Because but... Egyptians shaving their heads, shaving mm. their body hair, and shaving and, and wearing makeup was all practical things because, because of the, the climate. Sun. Yeah. Yeah. So this was, there's no reason at all for them not to do that. This, it was a stylistic choice this they was chose maybe not like to. in the, the, whole, the times before the Nile had its phases, because, like, you know, it only flooded for half the year. Yeah, and it was like big like, rainforest jungles yeah. and yeah, yeah but it was some... very very wet for, and lush for Egypt. I know, but it's the movie, so that they've made this choice about thing. Yeah, it was, they it, chose this it. is in the before times. Yeah, I agree. It was a stylistic failing. It did, it, it took you out of it looking Egyptian. It made yeah. it look generic fantasy. Yeah, my, in fact, because of the, the mixture of the white skin on so many people and the lack of makeup and the costuming, it looked they look more like Greco Romans. The, the individual characters, except, oh, when, yeah, yeah. except when they're all wearing fiery. All like, all like the wee peasants that were running yeah. around, though. They looked like peasants. They look like Greco a Greco-Roman version of the MCU of Asgard. Yeah. Yeah, and I just, I'm baffled by why Proy has decided to go all full crazy on those sorts of things, but then other stuff really, really, really pull back and do go not even as stylistically crazy but with costuming as like Pirates of the Caribbean. It's just, why? That was a bit jarring. Yeah. I still can't believe that was Jeffrey Rush. With a fantastically long braid. 
Yeah, why didn't Ra have, uh, have uh, wear eyeliners? The eye of Ra is the one which has the famous one with the eyeliner. Ra should have been wearing eye should have been wearing eyeliner up the fucking everywhere. It should have been made of eyeliner. Maybe you have to wear it to look at him, but he doesn't have to. <laughs> no, I'm being really serious here. But no one else was wearing eyeliner. Yeah, maybe that's something they adopted afterwards. Cause like, he like nearly like fell into the celestial ocean the one time and di and died. So now now he's serious. Now the sun is really gonna punish you, and probably now the Nile will go into phases. Punish the hubris of man. Well, that's a bit of a Thermian argument. Mm. I don't have a Thermian. That's your thing. No, Thermian. I'm... Look up the Thermian argument by folding mm. ideas. It's a really good description of a, of a criticism, logical fallacy, mm. which I'll explain to you guys the, off off screen. It was in but... the before times, before we invented eyeliner. But like, uh... before we invented consistency. <laughs> Oh yeah, and your man, the main character, was like, I don't believe in the gods. I don't think they're all that awesome. When they're literal gold-butted giants that rule you and walk among you. Ugh, he was just the worst Gary Stu, and like he could, he never did anything wrong, and he always did everything perfectly right, and all and his good luck like, never ran out. And he's and got very like, light brown curly hair. Yeah. He's supposed to be in a fucking he Egyptian. Like Adonis. And just... Rufus Sewell turns up with, an, with a literal villain goatee whenever he's meant to be playing an ancient Egyptian. A rich ancient Egyptian. Is by villain go to do like as well. I combed it myself. Why? Why did you? Why did you? Why did Proyas work out that fake beard wigs? You know, whether would look like sticks would look ridiculous. But I thought he they were didn't... like woven of a thrush. Yeah, but they look ridiculous. He worked out that would look ridiculous, but he didn't work out that a lot of other stuff he did in this would look ridiculous. And it, looking ridiculous is good because it's a completely alien culture to us. Doctor Doom would come with his if... waxen. If his a, beard woven of a thrush. If an ancient myth movie doesn't look ridiculous on some level, it's 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 not right because it's yeah. not even attempting to be to capture this other world of the past. Maybe they just couldn't get Ger Gerald Butler to shave his hair. Yeah, he's beard. <laughs> Everyone. Did you want Gerald Butler? Uh, said. Oh right, right, right. But it was nice that the God of the Dead in a mythological movie isn't the Satan stand-in for once, although yeah, it was really set like as that. usual, but. So many Clash of the Titans movies had Hades being the being the devil for some reason. Yeah, like literally a lot of the underworld gods are just kind of lawful neutral, really. Yeah. You know, I mean, they're like, and this was some, this was a point that I made in in the the uh, the, the second Alice in Wonderland movie, Through the Looking Glass, that like you know time is the one who ends people's lives, but he's a decent chap about it. You know, he does his job, and he's like, well. You know, that was your time. I hope you used it wisely. Good night. Through the Looking Glass was better than Tim Burton's Alice in Wonderland. Mm. Because it wasn't even trying to be accurate. Excellent. But yeah, like, I mean, a lot of times, like, I like that idea of, like, the celestial, celestial bureaucracy. Like, the, the West, the, uh, the Eastern cultures were all big on the celestial bureaucracy. I like that every god has their job and they just go about and they do their little job. I should show you Jinnah. Jinnah's biography of Muhammad Ali Jinnah, the founder of Pakistan. It's mm -hmm. like a nice counterpoint to the Gandhi movie, but it stars Christopher Lee as Jinnah. Mm -hmm. It was made by Pakistan. I, I don't know what... They have a lot of actors in Pakistan. <laughs> we would like you to come and be this guy. He's like, I'm Christopher well, Lee, all right. It was their most expensive movie they ever made, but they, they sought out Christopher Lee and because... And is there a celestial bureaucracy in that? Yeah, the, the, the whole film is constructed with the idea that Jinnah has just died, mm -hmm. and he goes to heaven. And unfortunately, the heavenly bureaucracy is having a fuck up, and their their uh, sort of filing system's gone messed up, and they can't, can't find the file in his life. So this angel is going through his life with him in order to recreate his file. Oh, okay. Oh. Yeah, I just I like I like that idea that you can even if you're like uh, a few a few RPGs did this well. Um, uh, in nominee by Steve Jackson Games this is actually a Judeo Christian version of that. Where it's just like, you were just the lesser demon or the lesser angel of someone's own. You're just doing your little job. Do, 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 do. And sometimes the demons can be pretty decent folks. And sometimes the angels can be assholes. But, you know, it's just... See, with this sort of idea... Everyone I... has their job and that's just nice. And this is how the world works. And everyone gets their paper stamped. And... With that sort of thing, I wouldn't mind... I like play a video game like that. I wouldn't mind seeing a, some sort of an adaption of the screw tape letters by C.S. Lewis. Yeah, like that whole idea that, like, you know, there's a procedure for this. <laughs> You know, although C.S. Lewis is still, although C.S. Lewis is still a terrible theologian. All right. Well, he's still popular. Well, yeah, he's like, a lot we'll of terrible things are popular. Yeah, yeah. But but screw tape was amusing. So go on YouTube, download you know rip from YouTube a few of the the nice orchestral pieces so you can you know play them when you're studying or you know running an orchestra. Oh, from the soundtrack. Yeah. But um, um, what did you think of this movie? We've been yelling too much. 
Well, you said most of what I what I think. Um, I like the concept. I like the idea of taking ancient myth and reimagining it a bit. But the dialogue was so clunky. Yeah. The script, some of the CGI, especially on the fight at the waterfall. And there's a severely where they, where baffling bit. Yeah, the baffling disjointed bit where they're spinning about and the camera angles change. And the oh, with, CG, with one guy in the afterlife and the other one not? No, no, it's the bit where they're fighting the waterfall and it's Horus fighting the bull guys. Oh, that looked like they were trying to be Oliver Stone and failing badly. Yeah, they really fail on that. And several parts, the CGI is looks mid-90s level. Yeah. It's just like there's a, a part moment. where your man, like, flat, like, swings on a rope down into a thing. Something that you just pay a stunt guy to do. But for some reason, they felt the need to CGI it, and it looked like original Clash of the Titans bad. Oh, yeah. I was some... like, could you not have just hired a stuntman? No, the original it's Clash of the Titans would have hired a stuntman because it was the 60s. Yeah, but it kind of looked like, 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 the, the, do, 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 like, it looked oh, yeah. wrong. It was not and happy. The monster that got that got its leg cut off. That was hilarious. Was left. But that looked like claymation. That was on the level of claymation. So. Claymation is awesome. Yeah, but you don't expect it to see it in CGI. If your CGI looks like claymation, <laughs> well, done you've, you've made Manborg. Yeah. <laughs> Manborg. Yeah. Manborg was awesome. Yeah, but, but and they had like, what, a $6,000 budget? Uh, there was one bit I found entirely baffling. Towards the end, uh, they're all going up into the top of this giant oh, tower. Yeah, yeah. And oh, I know. Uh, then they're bringing Rufus Sewell up there because he's the architect. And because then, he needs, he, you, they need him to get up there. I, we watched that sequence. They didn't need him at all. Yeah, they had yeah. to bring him up there. So Horace then leapt off the lift decided to climb up the outside of the building. Even though while the lift was going lift. up anyway. And then Rufus Sewell got into a fight with the main with the with the thief guy, and he killed he kills Rufus Sewell. And then it turns out a he wasn't needed. And then Horace arrives there. They both arrive there at the same time. It's like this whole thing could have been avoided if we just stayed in the fucking lift. It's like. Yeah. This is one of these times where I'm pretty sure they the had... The plot demands it. They, someone put a, re a note in there, we need an action beat in this part of the script, and so they inserted it in there and could not think of a logical reason for why it happened. Yeah, oh, there's a problem like... They were, they were calling back to the whole bait thing. Yeah, but, but still... The bait thing didn't work out very well anyway. It no. made no sense. Oh, yeah. And, of course, depending on how long it took for uh, Horace to make his wee announcement at the end... Rufus Sewell's character may well already be off into the afterlife because he had all the wealth. Well, it took several days, so what I'm imagining... I really, I'm really surprised there wasn't a scene. Maybe there's a post credit scene where Rufus Sewell gets the front of the line. It's like, like literally two seconds earlier, it changed to it to be your deeds. And then he's like, oh, fuck! Yep, your heart is weighed against a phone. And if it is found lacking, you are devoured by, by Sobek. And for some reason, the judges of the dead were, um, there was no devourer they for were, some reason. Yeah, they were ancient, they were these old kings. Well, maybe the devourer just, like, sucked you up when you turned into Adams. But I was really hoping we'd get to see Sobek, the devourer. Yeah, why don't we see the devourer? I mean, is that, the devourer doesn't eat the you, the devourer eats your heart. Well, yeah. fair play. It was supposed to be your heart versus the, the feather of tr yeah. truth. And well, I, maybe he only comes about after that. I suppose logically, maybe. But they have the pharaohs. I'm pretty sure the, the one pharaoh who, who was talking to them, mm -hmm. I think that was Bruce Spence. I don't know who that is. Bruce Spence. Uh, he has a habit of appearing in cult series, but only in the third episode. He was in uh, Return of the King, playing the Mouth of Sauron. Okay. He played the train man in the third Matrix movie. He turned up playing a random alien in the third, uh, in Star Wars Episode Three. He... He really threw us for a loop by being in Mad Max 2 and 3, but playing different characters, both with planes. I don't know, I don't know what he is, personally. He's a re he's really thin, weird-looking actor, a bit like Vincent Chevalier, but Australian. If you're yes. Bruce Spence, not dead. write the show. Yes, and a unique set of dentition. Yeah. And there's this one part where they're in, like, they're right about to quench the eternal flame in the center of the pyramid they've set. And then, like, he's like, well, so it's like, I've defeated you, and I caged you, and your eternal waters are gone, haha. -ha. And then, for some reason, like, the whole entire pyramid comes down. I'm like, why, why did that happen? A load bearing boss was not defeated. <laughs> like, what? Why did that happen? Well, whenever you've got characters who are literal gods inside a film, then certain things sure, can be accepted just randomly happening. Yeah. I mean, the, the, this pyramid. And the, 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 the Sphinx was literally scripted by Yahtzee Krosha. Like, when, when I, I feel like, you know. That's exactly what I thought of, because they're like, oh, what do you feel the rhythm of the streaks? Pigs was, oh, bother. Like, yeah. Winnie the fucking Pooh. Oh, yeah, bother, bo Piglet. They've guessed it. The, the emotion on that one, it 
obviously they were, he was going to say, or the, or the VA said, oh, bollocks at that point. You think so? Yeah, it felt like that was the natural progression of that line and that expression. Balls. And the, oh, um, balls. The, the Sphinx made out of sand and The Sphinx and did stuff, not look good. And it looks like a, a boss from God of War 3. Like the PlayStation uh, Three God version. God of War Two. God of War Two, maybe. Okay. Not not big enough for God of War Three. <laughs> and the pyramid that it was in, though, I like the design of that. It was a non-Euclidean pyramid made up of shifting sands that yeah. sometimes turned into rock. So the little mad imagining you know, bits like that. I kept thinking, oh, I bet that level is really hard in the video game. Oh wait, this is not going to get a video game. Yeah, I mean, I'm yeah, sad. A quick time event sequence there. Yeah, I'm really sad. Well, no, the part we had to like he was running through like all the the garden of the tombs. I was with the snakes. So I was like, but that's really difficult. Mm. But I'm really sad that this is done as badly as it has because, a, the message Hollywood will take from this is that you shouldn't do non Greco Roman myth movies. Actually, the main myth lesson will be don't do myth movies. Second one will be only do myth movies about Greco Roman stuff. And the third one will be. So the first two were fine, you know. Maybe they're trying to start their own franchise. Maybe they want to do like a Pantheon a year, like Marvel. Yeah, if they if this if they if this had done really well and they had kicked off a bunch of random movies oh, about the Babylonian different ones, gods, they get up to some shit. Yeah, yeah. if they if they'd done that like gods of Babylon, gods of the Aztecs, stuff like that, that right. would be awesome. Actually, gods of Babylon would be great because you'd start with the gods hating humans and end with the gods hating humans, <laughs> because the Babylonian gods are dicks. Um, talking about gods of gods of the Celts precious. and stuff. It, it, I, I really wish that had happened because that would have at least been interesting. And BBC, take note. And the because open. and because they're gods, you don't even need any sort of continuity between the movies. No, no you can it'd go be with such the a concept. It'd be a wonderful playground for for filmmakers. See, I really I used it's to not have I do have the Scion base book somewhere, but that was oh, something yes. that really intrigued me was. White Wolf's very, very, very late in the... Actually, I don't even... Was it World of Darkness? It was not World of Darkness. It was a variation. It used the uh, Exalted Dice system. Okay. I knew it was like kind of there, but almost. I, I've i played a lot of games of Scion. That's one of the reasons I like this. Was it any good? Because I got the base book and I was like... Mm. It's a fantastic concept. The rule set needs a, quite a lot of clunging to mm. make it work. But better than that, there's a new version on its way at the oh, moment. Really? Yes. Okay. Because, like, I, I bought the base book because it looked cool, and then I could never get anyone to play it with me, so I was like, mm. I'll have to get you online at some point. Uh, I play it occasionally with friends over Roll20. Hmm. I don't know that now. Hmm. I'm always like, uh, you, you guys, you don't understand. Like, I have some of my gaming books here. I, I've got six large um, Barnes & Noble boxes full of RPG books that are in a Each public... weighing a ton. No, they don't weigh a ton. Time. Well, they weigh, 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 they weigh less than 40 pounds, because I think I've... Time. They, uh, no, okay. So they're in public storage in Westchester somewhere, but until I can figure out how to freight ship them over here when we get a flat. But, yeah, I, I bought a lot of RPG books. I love to run, but I dislike gaming groups because they're so fractious. And there were, there were several years where I played with this one group that we were so dysfunctional. I never increased a character sheet um, with experience because the ge we just oh, it would dissolve that quickly. Wow. Somebody would get pissed off at somebody else and then things and stuff and then... And stuff and things? Yeah. I can't but think of... of Egypt. The... Yeah, okay. The, the last thing I want to bring up. Oh. The, but the, the way that it treats myth with madness. It's, if you look at the Noah vlog that I did with Robin, this does the sort of thing that I thought Noah should have done, but it does it. Like the only Noah only a couple of times got the logical madness of the world. Like they in Noah in the story uh, that's the first rainbow. So they have this sort of crazy disco effect of rain of rainbow, like omni disco rainbow. Effect. Yeah, they they decided, they decided to create the most impressive rainbow, and it covers the entire sky. If they had done that for the whole thing, like depict the Bible, the biblical version of of the world. Saturday night rainbow fever. Like with four pillars and everything, and then you've got the scientific creationist idea where you've got that the world. Uh, was encased in a bubble of water, mm -hmm. because and because because according to the Bible, God's uh, opened the heavens of the, you know opened the water canopy or whatever, and the water came in. This is how creationists try to explain what happened, because obviously the flooding the world cannot be flooded and to cover everything. Mm -hmm. So these are this is the guys who believe fully in the entire world getting flooded literally. So this well, I technically when you had Pangaea, there were two thirds of it right. Yeah, but there's not enough water to cover the entire world. No, it wouldn't be. So, um, 
So they, they came up with this idea that there was a bubble of water around the world and God basically opened holes which let the water in and that's how the world got flooded and then it sort of vanished or something. But that's what I thought Noah should have done. Before the flood, the sky should have looked weird as though we were seeing the light through a prism. Mm. As though it was encased in, in water. And like, the family, yeah. Noah's... Hmm? It would have been a subtle difference and then you go, okay, what's up with that? Yeah. Uh, but you wouldn't realise it until basically the water started falling and you realise... Oh. Yes, you oh, see, I see you what you looked cool. I see what yeah. you did there, God. Yeah, and the other one from Noah that I thought they should have done was because they they decided to go for make all the main characters who survived like Noah and his family white. What they should have done was having their ethnicities as we recognize them had no place pre flood. And so Noah's family just happened to have members of all the races the main the main big racial groups today. Okay. And so that everyone's descended from them. Therefore, maybe before the flood, you had people with green skin and purple skin and stuff. And they all just, they're, they're extinct, so they, they didn't survive, so therefore there's no more children like that. Captain Kirk cries for them in the night. See? The, but take those sorts of ideas, apply them to Noah, and you can, that, you can imagine... That would confuse people who aren't smart, though. Well, yeah, a lot of the stuff in this film would confuse people who aren't smart, at least, at least when it comes to the myth stuff. Like, like why is Jeffrey Rock in a spaceship? Nobody in Derry has that accent. Maybe someone does. If yeah. you're in Derry with that accent, right, show. I, 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 I'm in Derry with that accent. Down the street? What'd you say? Is that one guy down the street at the shop? <laughs> huh? I'm in Derry with that accent. Observe. You... I'm in Derry with that spaceship accent. No, you're not. You just put it on for the thing. Although, it was nice because we got popcorn. And I did my thing of, oh, I'm going to buy a bag of Haribo gummies and I'm going to forget that I have them. Actually, I remember that I have them, but I eat all the popcorn, so I don't want them anymore. Oh, Haribo. But, I do like it. I didn't get I didn't get the 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 cola bottles because they're my favorite. And I literally would have eaten the entire. Bag. So I got the Smurfs because they're all right. But better than the remake Clash of the Titans films, but only because it's just as crap. However, it's more imaginative. And I'd say, decide if you want to go see it, but it's too late for you anyway. Most of you are in America. Yeah, so. amusingly bad. It's a film that is worth riffing on. Yeah. It's also worth uh, discovering, reading the exact words that Alex Proy has had in his breakdown where he was complaining about the critics. Oh, God, yes. The, 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 he the had director. A Why do directors do this? He like wrote down this horrible thing attacking people, saying that my film only failed because people, politically correct people were angry about the casting. It's like, no, Alex, it failed for a lot of reasons, sad reasons, but... Like, even if you had everybody of appropriate colour, it was still a bad script and the CGI was weird and, the, yeah. you know, things... That didn't make sense. And... Yeah. I, was like, I love you, Alex Proyas, for directing The Crow and Dark City, but you were full of shit there. For this, I'm sad it was a failure. Mummy is made in Egypt. Ah! Oh, hmm? uh, Osiris was played by the guy from the TV, the short lived late 90s TV show FX, which was like this crime show where this guy did special effects, would solve crimes using special effects. Oh god, yeah, I remember. You remember that. that show? Yeah, the really stupid concept. Yes! I was like, who the fuck is that guy? Oh, it's the guy from Effects! <laughs> okay. It's this random Australian guy, that's See, hilarious. I, I feel kind of bad because I, I, like I was saying this to my coworker, I know this sounds pretentious, but as a small child, I was very into Egyptology. And, like, that sounds like, yeah, yeah, okay, of course you were. But, so. I don't know. It's not on YouTube. I actually, no. My my um, don't eat the pictures review is not anywhere anymore because it's not on Blood. Bl is it gone. not on YouTube? No, I didn't put it on YouTube. So I figured we'd get got. I think oh, I think I still have it. Good on YouTube. I still have it anywhere. But anyway, oh, dear. so Sesame Street, and you can Google this. Uh, do do movies periodically, and one of them they visited the Metropolitan Museum of Art. It was called Don't Eat the Pictures, and it was one of the first ones that I reviewed as Omega. Um, and in it, um, Big Bird and Snuffleupagus helped the ghost of one of the wee mummies. He's this wee, wee Egyptian boy, um, solve the riddle of the Sphinx and have his heart weight against a feather to go to, to heaven and become a star in the sky like his parents. And this really intrigued me. And my parents thought, well, if you're interested, and they bought me this book uh, by an art artist, by an illustrator and a writer called Aliki. And it's still in print. You can get it on Amazon called Mummies Made in Egypt. And I was probably the only four-year-old who knew what a canopic jar was. <laughs> So I was kind of disappointed because I like the Egyptian-ness, it's nice. So for possibly an ancient Egyptian whose father was uh, made them. 
I would well, I had a teacher who actually had to tell me, that, like, Osiris actually is the god of the dead. And the things, and she was like, we don't talk about dead gods. I was like, no. Oh. I would guess that possibly one of us would have known about what Kenobi jar at fourth, uh, at four years. In your house, yes. Yes. I don't know. I remember, I knew a lot about Egypt when I was a small child, but because I'd only read it and never actually spoke it, in the class they were talking about the Egyptian kings, and I, I mispronounced the word pharaoh. But I kept saying, it's not a king, it's a blah, blah, blah. I can't remember what pronunciation he used, but it was wildly wrong. And uh, and then... Uh, I, I, and then because it was Northern Ireland, you were soundly kneecapped on it was, during recess. Yeah, it was, it was... My kneecaps were drilled with the words, it's pronounced fucking pharaoh, you cunt. I don't think that happened, but... <laughs> my father-in-law knows every fact ever. This is the truth. But we'll go, that'll be the end of this, unless anyone has a final word to say. No. That will be it. What are we going to see next? I have no idea. God help us all. We've got no trailers for anything new. He's got the Suicide Squad and the Ghostbusters one, so. Yeah. I don't know what to tell you. Eee.